Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Welcome to House of Rugby URC, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. For today's show, we'll be talking about all the weekend's matches from the URC, including try of the weekend, and also Jason's very own jukebox award, and taking to social media with what you guys have to say about the matches. And we also, if that's not enough for you, we have a very special guest with us, Darren Cave. I feel like um, the show should probably start with an apology after I listened last week and you guys <laughs> said that you promised um, the biggest names in rugby um, and you delivered first of all Ian Keatley and then secondly me so you're gonna have some, we're gonna have some very disappointed listeners so sorry for anyone who's tuned in. <laughs> and he also has brought another friend with him I think it's the moustache. Um, yeah there's been a lot of comments already about that. Um, I like it. I've, 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 it out there, I like it. I've chosen to take them as compliments, yeah. so... Um, <laughs> I can't go on. I mean, look at me and check this off. It wouldn't work. Yeah. I like it. I Listen, like it. it was a lockdown idea. Uh, it was supposed to be around for a couple of months, as lockdown was. <laughs> and uh, a year and a half later, it's still there. I think, actually, the more, like, aggro it gets, the more I enjoy it. So the more people are, you know, tease, <laughs> uh, the more I think... Uh, I don't care what you think about me, and you know I don't need your approval to have this. So yeah, 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 yeah Anyway, yeah. look, look. Enough about the mustache. I thought that's what I thought that was why I was here. No, yeah. no, no, no. We're going to the URC. We're going to the URC action. Now. Well, look. Before we go into the URC action, well, obviously last week we discussed it. The the Irish women, obviously, you know, failing to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. Yes. And as you mentioned, like we, we thought there might be a retirement or two. There was one big retirement. Yeah, Claire Malloy, she's been a big part of the squad over the last number of years, you know, winning 74 caps for Ireland. It's such a shame for her to finish out um, that way last week. But uh, she went to Twitter and she put out a tweet saying, 74, over and out, I'm ready for the next chapter. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's to come for, for Claire. She has a really high profile job being a doctor in the UK. So wishing her the best of luck going forward. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, and something I wanted to talk about, I was talking to you off air. Obviously, Bodie, you've got young children, so you didn't get a chance to tune into New Zealand versus That's South it. Africa at 10 o'clock in the morning. Me, of course, obviously was watching it pretty religiously. Yeah, um, Jason has been talking about it all morning. He's been that, dying to tell is, us about the match. It is one of the so best test matches us. I've <laughs> ever seen. Yeah, you've built it up. I haven't seen it, so right. I'm, I'm going really like, to give you a little please snippet. Please do not under-deliver. Yeah. This, this like, I'll give you a little snippet here. I've got all like, like little kind of into little points here, right? So basically, um, in the end of box 131-29, right, which is good because we all like seeing the All Blacks lose, of course. Well, I do anyway. Um, <laughs> so basically, at, at six, six minutes gone, it's 25-20 to the box, right? Francois Stein gives away a penalty that should not have been a penalty. I was, he was charging on a kick from Jordy Barrett. I mean, Francois carrying a bit of timber in his, his older years. I don't think it was a penalty. He literally catches the top of his toe, but as you know, where the ball lands, he gets the penalty. So. Uh, Jordy Barrett, of course, knocks the penalty over. It's 25-23. Then, 73 minutes, another penalty to the All-Backs, knocks it over. Now it's 26-25 to the All-Backs. It's getting right? exciting now. It's exactly yeah. exciting now, right? <laughs> then on <laughs> three, minutes later, three minutes later, then, uh, Yankees knocks over a drop goal to make it 28-26. A so drop goal. Yeah, so the box are back, at, back in front again, right? <laughs> then, straight off kickoff, 10 seconds later, box and fringe, another penalty, the All-Backs take the lead again, right? We think that's it. They're after throwing it away like they did the previous week. Up steps Mr. Dwayne Vermeulen, who you'll get to know all about when he signs for Ulster legend. Yeah, well, he's soon to be Ulster legend. <laughs> he pops up with the most ridiculous turnover I've ever seen, right? It's 55, 56 metres out. We're all thinking, Stain's going to go for it, is he? No, he doesn't go for it. They kick to the corner. They maul. Push, push in again. They get in centre field. All backs in fringe. Offside. Penalty in front of the post, box win, game over. I was wondering how many times he was going to go, and then down the other end, and then down the other <laughs> I've end. I've heard this all morning, so I already, like, I should have said it myself, I know it off by heart now. <laughs> <laughs> look, just uh, go back match, and watch really it. it. If you're watching it live, like, yeah. it was just, and like, I was there, obviously, cheering on the box, I want to see the box win, and after seeing him, it looked like it was going to be a repeat of last week, but... Fortunately enough, it wasn't. I know. Well, I was, re I was ready to go at 8 o'clock. We ones, obviously, were up since about half six, probably. 
and flicked on the telly and thought, brilliant, we might see the Springboks, we might, we might see the All Blacks, and then had that disappointment when, like, you know... Australia, Argentina. Yeah. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't discriminate on the show, but let's be honest, if there's a game in the Rugby Championship you don't want to watch, yeah. uh, no offence to the Aussies, who've been going well, yeah. uh, and the Three, RGs. Four wins on the bounce now, is it, or three wins? Four wins on the bounce now, for the first time since, like, I don't know, forever. So anyway, yeah, I, I watch Coco Melon instead of the uh, All Black Springboks game, which is, um, I'm not sure it actually was as exciting, but I would love to have seen you narrate the episode of Coco Melon or Peppa Pig, like, you did just like that so I don't think that's a future feature yeah, no I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to the rugby for now um, other news uh, Rhino Peter I don't know how to pronounce this is it Rhino Reno Peterson the um, the cast lock we saw, we saw that tackle a few weeks ago uh, he's after getting it was originally 24 weeks have due to his previous record in the mission against so he's after getting a 12 week ban for his Superman tackle as we as I'm starting to call it yeah it was a bit uh, Lucy? Yeah, was, oh. I, I thought you were going to say he got seven months in jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that bad. You know, it really was. One of those it was things, ridiculous. Like, heat like in the moment and like. Lace, no arms, yeah. the whole lot. Like, and they they love a reduction, thinking? don't they? Yeah. They yeah. love it. Like, well, they give him a year and a half, but yeah. he brushed his teeth before he came, so he got three <laughs> weeks. No, yeah, he, got, sure. he, got, he, got, he got he got 12 weeks again. Yeah. Like, like, you know, that's. I mean. He took the gill and. It's I still three months out. He won't do it again, put it that way. He's learned his lesson. Exactly. You know? You know? We had Ian Keatley with us on the podcast last week and we're joined by Darren. So being in, the, in that bubble for such a long time in the rugby world, like what do you want to do after rugby? Like what, what are you guys doing now at the moment? Are you selling commercial insurance? Did I hear? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm looking for a good nearly, deal. <laughs> nearly. Um, well, it's been, it's been a, a different two years for everybody, yeah. not just Darren Cave, mm -hmm. um, as I'm saying, <laughs> but... Yeah, I've been busy. I've been busy. Um, I don't really miss rugby at all for some reason. People keep saying to me, um, mm -hmm. oh, it'll hit you one day. And um, they say, oh, you miss the lads. You miss the changing room. And I don't know, maybe I didn't like the lads. Maybe the lads didn't like me. <laughs> um, my first daughter was born uh, the month after I retired. And that was just the best way ever to forget about rugby. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like... I own a few coffee shops, uh, opened a hot dog place recently. Oh, I actually do work for a foreign exchange company based in London. I try and play golf <laughs> and I try and I try and watch rugby, but there's always a negotiation process that happens at home. So um, I'm keeping busy. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. asking. Yeah. Very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we obviously want to hear about your uh, thoughts from the URC over the weekend, but we've got a fun little game for you. Okay. We're going to play 10 questions with Darren Cave. That's you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope I hope I, I hope I get the answers right. But yeah, yeah. Are you ready? So I'm going to kick off the first one. Yeah. Okay. Best advice. There was a defence coach at Ulster, and uh, when I was very young and just come through, his name's Peter Sharp in a rugby league background. Uh, I remember he's uh, there was one passage of play I lay down injured for like a minute or a minute and a half, and mm. we were defending, and then when. Um, the physio came on, I just got up and played on. And I remember he said to me after the game, he said, if you ever lie down like that when you're not hurt, like, yeah. he's like, if you are hurt, that's fine to stay down and go off the pitch. But if you're ever going to lie down for a minute and then get back in the defensive line and help your team, then I, uh, I'll make sure you don't play for Ulster ever again. Were you just having a rest? Do you know what? I think I had picking up a bang, but the point okay. was, like, you know, yeah. get in the defensive line. So, And I think that was a pretty solid piece of advice, and I would say that to... People know, like if you are legitimately hurt, that's yeah. fine. But be honest, yeah. Yeah, like if yeah. You, if you're not, like if you can stand in the defensive line and stand there. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair point. So, uh, obviously, I was hard as nails. If you listen to <laughs> like my version yeah. of the career, if you ever watch me, you may have a different opinion, which is uh, it's also oh, okay. That's great advice. So, who would be the greatest player you've ever played with? I was very fortunate um, in my career that not that I was in any way good myself, but I was able to. You both nodded as I said that. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, no, I was. I, I, well, you were supposed to say it like Darren. You're so humble. Um, I, like honestly, there's all the obvious answers. Like I was lucky enough to play with Brandon Driscoll, Johnny Sexton, Paul O'Connell, Rory Best, Brian Pinar. Um, you stick that in your head straight away. Oh, quick, mean, quick, quick, quick. Go on. I'm not going to give O'Driscoll as that because that's such yeah, a boring support, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's probably a, a, a couple of curveball answers would probably yeah. be like uh, John Afoa. He, he was a tight head prop, so it's yeah. not like a totally glamorous Still position. Still playing, yeah. But somehow. Yeah, he was unbelievable. <laughs> and I remember he arrived in Ireland, and no offence to Mike Ross and John Hayes, but at that stage, the Irish tight head, this was before Tag Furlong. Yeah. It, was, it was like Irish, uh, does he have a pulse? Yes. Is he 21 stone? Yes. Put a three on his back. <laughs> <Put> him in. <laughs> him in. Uh, and he arrived, and it, he was unbelievable. And I probably... Um, 
give a mention to uh, Jared Payne in that he was one of the best, but I think he's a guy who was better than people thought. If underrated, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Massively so like, underrated. Um, yeah. He was class. What about the toughest player you've ever played with? Ooh, with? That's yeah, like is in on or off, like this is some, as you were saying there early on about guys getting up, who's some guy that like if his arm or leg or ear was hanging off, he was in that defensive line? I mean, he loves a pat on the back and he's got enough of them, but I mean, Rory Bass cleaned out a rock against the All Blacks, the broken arm. That's pretty hard, do you know what I mean? Gee, that's tough. Um, that's impressive. Yeah. Like Chris Henry was tough, but he was like one of the like you just he just used to get beaten up. And do you know what I mean? He yeah. was the kind of guy who like you managed to get just his shirt dirty him. in the changing room before he went out. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's a few guys like obviously um, Paul O'Connell. Um, uh, I would if if I was allowed to include myself. I wouldn't be in that group. But, uh, I think I'm you're going to include yourself in the next question as well, actually. Okay. I'm going to ask let's say you. Yes, before let's we say go on, but yes. what about against? I know that's tougher. Like, what about against? There's someone oh. there you could say that would be a tough fair play against. I mean, again, there, there's, there's so many in, in a, whatever year was career. But I remember one time there was a loose ball. Uh, we were playing Claremont and a loose ball. And I like tried to hack the ball. And obviously, he wasn't a great soccer finisher because I missed the ball. And I, ca I caught Julian Bonaire on the head. <laughs> And I had this moment of like, Fear. I have just absolutely like put the laces through somebody's head. And I was actually, it was in the middle of, it was at the Kingspan, 15,000 people, Champions Cup game. And I was like super apologetic. I've just um, kicked this guy in the head. Like, a, do you know what I mean? And he, looked, he mad? No, he was like, Yo, I'm good, man. So French. Like, he was like, honestly, oh, I remember like going, oh my Blessing. goodness. Like, um, so I'm going to give him for that little incident. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Not sure if he remembers it. Probably not. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it after that knock. Not, yeah. No. Right, when you started up your Instagram account, who did you first post a picture of yourself with? <laughs> Do you remember? There's a, I, think there's, the answer. Some, I think yeah. there's actually a backstory with this. I got my Instagram hacked and it got taken over. That's what um, and At I had beginning? to start it again. Yeah, What's so the I, I woke up one. Uh, so everybody put on your two factor authentication. Okay. Um, that's uh, for all you kids listening at home. I woke up one morning and somebody had Cactus. like um, my like my, my login details weren't working, and I, I have no idea what happened. And so you have no idea why you put a picture of you with Bradley from well, Club Seven. The, you just you just you just that was the punchline. No, I'm joking. Uh, so yeah, I had to start my Instagram again. I lost my blue tick. Um, how, um, so all not only when I retired, you know, and then actually I went back to request it and it got turned down. What? I had then, yeah, okay, new Instagram, I'm going to put up a picture, like I had every picture and I just randomly put up a picture of uh, a selfie of me and Bradley from S Club 7, that so was the one random. that I was like. How old were you? Uh, about 30, because it, uh, it was in a nightclub. Oh, wait, in, I swear from the same He and um, the blonde haired one from S Club 7 were doing a gig. Brilliant. About five years ago, <laughs> unbelievably. So there you go, it was Bradley from S Club 7, I knew that. We'll get away from this kind of stuff so we get to something a bit more serious, right? Are you ready yeah. for this now? Yeah, yeah. So in 2013, you questioned if your face didn't fit the Ireland squad, right? Now, do you know how Joe Smith reacted to that? Did you ever speak to him after it? Do you know that I get asked about that literally in everything I ever do? Yeah, and um, no, no, we're rugby. not any different. So, do you know, um, it was... I actually... I would be quite, I think there's a real stalemate between like media and players. It's like media don't trust, players don't trust media so they get boring content but media are listening to this drivel every week and they have to produce something that people are going to yep. watch, listen to. It's really, yep. and I, I, there, I have empathy for both sides and okay. I'm not one or the other even though technically I'm media now. And for once, you know, I just decided to sort of speak my mind a wee bit and I've referred to it before, we were on tour in New Zealand in I think 2012, it was a three test tour and in the second, I was on the bench in the first test, left out second test, and I think Dars broke his arm, probably he seemed to break his arm every couple of years, but uh, whatever it was, and Gordon Darcy flew home, and Paddy Wallace was on um, holiday in Portugal, and Paddy like, is one of my best friends from rugby, but he flew, they flew him from Portugal uh, on the Sunday, back to the UK, flew him uh, from Belfast, I actually don't even know if he went back to Belfast, I think they flew him from Portugal, 
uh, to New Zealand, and then we were in Queenstown. So he arrived on like the Tuesday, yeah. and Decky uh, picked him to start at twelve on the weekend. And I've 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 met Declan Kidney since, like since I've retired and mm. and had a laugh with him, and, and we've had a laugh about that incident. But I remember just thinking, like, what? Why am I here? What yeah. was the point in me being on tour? Um, but I do regret actually speaking honestly because it just got like you know it got Joe wasn't even the coach then that was yeah. just, you know but it got directed at Joe and it okay. got um, but it was really I had a really good relationship with Joe and actually what happened was I got wind of the article that uh, as soon as it went live and I didn't really like what they'd done so to be clear yeah, kind of always blow things out proportion don't yeah you? as you said yeah they twist they things really and they're trying to just make to get a, a good headline it wasn't um and then it kind of kept going but it mm. wasn't and i phoned joe and said joe look to be clear this is not a misquote okay i've said this mm. and this is why i felt like that um uh what i don't like about the article is that it's kind of been misinterpreted as yeah. Yeah. You That's know, what we want to ask you. We want to clear it up, like you know, yeah. what I mean? uh, as like this issue with Joe Schmidt and blah blah blah. And do you know what? Joe gets a hard time, but he like he couldn't have been sounder. But he yeah. said, "Darn, I understand." In relation to that mm -hmm. incident, and he said, "The reason probably you haven't played more um, over the past few years for Ireland, in my opinion, is because Draco has been so good and so durable." Yeah. Um, and we got on with it. And Joe and I had a great relationship with Joe. But people love the kind of idea that I didn't. And and the drama. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, looking back now as as an old as an old lad, I would probably advise a young player not to bother. Mm -hmm. I would advise not a young player. Not Nah, just go into the press conference and say, yeah, look, they're going to be physical. We will work really hard. You know, they're really energetic. Just go and say that mm -hmm. uh, and get on with your life because it wasn't worth the hassle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I it's get probably you. quite hard to bring your personality into those kind of um, interviews, isn't it? Like you have to go by the script a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, as I said at the start of that sort of section, that's why I think mm. I, I do have empathy for the media mm. because at the end of my career, I was going into press conferences and just going like, these people, I've seen these people here for the last 13 years. How bored do you think they are of going like, Kiev exactly. wants to be centre of attention? And yeah. it's like, it's painful. It's for frustrating everybody. because you're so media trained, but at the same time, you've ex just explained you, there why you got to be so media trained. It's not just for the RFU; it's for mm. you as well and yeah. your career. Because and ultimately, that was a distraction, and it was a very uncomfortable um, 48 hours. Mm. Even after I'd spoken to Joe, when I knew it was okay, it still was uncomfortable. Mm. Um, and I, as I said, yeah, I would advise if a, if a young player said to me, "No," I would just say, "Lad, don't bother. Do yeah. not bother. Um, going on podcasts. Don't don't put your head above the parapet. Just get on with it." Yeah. Um, so when you're tired, you can say what you want then, like, basically. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in the bubble, you just gotta <laughs> stick to the script, essentially. Pretty much, yeah, because uh, yeah. everything can be turned against, yeah. Mm. And, like, you notice it in games, you know, when it's clearly a mismatch in terms of, like, maybe Leinster are at home to per zebra. Um, and the players will be like, you know, they're the change coach and they'll just make up all this nonsense. And really, you're just dying for them to say, like, um, if we play well, we'll win. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's the truth, and we're trying yeah. to score a bonus point. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Megan, do you want to go into now, next question? I suppose question? now you're outside of that bubble um, of, of rugby, and like you have a lot of interests as well. You know, you have your coffee shop. You've got a bit of an interest in psychology. Um, what are those? Um, is there something that you know the fans might don't know about you? Have you got any hidden um, hobbies or talents that you'd like to share now? This is your moment. Except the, you can't <laughs> use the mustache in this part. Like we know that's a talent. <laughs> yeah. okay. What is? I don't think anything that's overly hidden. If if I didn't, if it was up to me, I would play golf, drink coffee, <laughs> drink beers. You must have a phobia or something, something like that. Mm, phobia. I'm terrified of pretty much everything, like so I can't really. Say. I, I don't really know. Uh, one thing I like about retirement is like, and I don't know, do you not find that like life is just a little less up and down? Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. You know, apart from uh, rugby's a like roller coaster. Sense. Yeah. Just oh, like no. you know, when like so you play on Friday night and there's a bonus point win and you score the try and it's uh, you know ecstasy and then like you're dropped and then you're injured and then you get dropped and you deal with that and then your dad phones and asks why you're not <laughs> playing and then you have an argument with him about why the other player what the coach has told you about the other player. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's totally. so up and down. Yeah. And I just like now like sort of a little more a bit more mellow like 
yeah. you're not so uptight all the time. A little bit with kind of what's going on and yeah. being, I don't know, all your research, preparing for matches. And... Chilled out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and out. it is. You do like you miss. You miss the highs, but I don't miss that like roller coaster of emotion, I suppose. And I've spoken about this before. When I retired, I was like so fudged off with selection, like yeah. frightening. And uh, when I speak about it before, I always, I've said this before, sorry. I never like would argue now that what I believed was correct, okay? So okay. I'm not saying I was the best player, okay? Yeah for that shirt or that position, but I genuinely believed at the time that I was. You've got to believe that, like, you have, you've got to believe that. Like. Therefore, yeah. I find it soul-destroying, like, the last couple of years of my career, dealing with just sheer frustration of never really, even sitting down with a coach, mm -hmm. and I'm, I just couldn't. Except and I, what they were saying. Yeah, and yeah. I never got a reason. I thought, you know, that's actually fair enough. He, I cannot do that on the rugby yeah. pitch. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, I watched the All Blacks, and I look at Rico Ioanni, and I'm like, how did I play? <laughs> <laughs> the same position yeah. as yeah. this guy in international yeah, rugby because he's swatting people but, off. Uh, and... Speaking of ups and downs, like you I mean, forget about the downs. We don't want to drag up that pass, but ups. So mm. we had a few questions over on Twitter, and someone pointed out Peter Lowry. He basically wanted to know what you thought your best performance was in an Ulster jersey. For him, it was uh, I hate saying this now. Monster, my team, of course, mm -hmm. uh, in Tolman Park in 2009. He reckons was your best game. In 2009, yeah. I actually do remember that game. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. Uh, one, I can say that uh, one of my last games is one of the games I look uh, fondest back and unfortunately for me I didn't win any trophies in my career at Ulster so I remember the losses quite well. Mm. Uh, but oh, I, I the Yeah, the Aviva um, quarter-final against Leinster when we just narrowly lost, that was a game. Um, so the week before I had strained the Interconto, Intercostal I so nearly said intercontinental, intercontinental, yeah. uh, intercostal <laughs> muscles, um, and it was one of the sorest things I've ever like of all my injuries, broken bones and stuff like that. So it was like when you breathe, when you breathe, you couldn't move yeah. your. Um, Oof. And I remember Dan McFarland said to me on the Monday, he was like, "Will you be allowed to play?" And I was like, "Yeah," because it was Leinster, yes. it was the Champions Cup, and yeah. I was in my head, I was thinking I'm retiring, and oh, I had to get an anaesthetic. Um, injections, uh, so I got two anaesthetic. Just to numb it, like? Yeah, so the ribs were fine, it was the muscles between, and okay. they were like, look, these, you don't need these muscles to play, but it's basically if you can cope with the pain. So I got anaesthetic, injected either side of the ribs. Um, I remember it perfectly, I was sitting in the Herbert Park Hotel, just, and the doctor's like, and I'm going like, and then the physio had actually been at the Olympics with Team GB, and he goes, oh, I'll strap, uh, I'll do this strapping. And I'm like, he goes, it's an old tennis strapping from like a tennis injury. And I'm like, well, that'll be great when we're running out at the Aviva against Flippin. Um, so that day, and Leinster were miles better at this, and I just threw everything into it. And uh, it was just a memorable day, played quite well. And that was probably when I knew, I was like, do you know what? That's the last memory yeah. that the people of Ireland, like I played a couple of games after, but that's the last memory of that these 60,000 people and X, you know, 100,000 people on TV have of me. And yeah. sort of, so that was kind of like a, even though we lost, like something I was like. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. really proud that's of that something one. I'm gonna go. Yeah. And to talk about the, yeah, yeah, like I remember going into that game, how much I was worried about mm. the injury. And it was like, Physically, you probably felt really kind of, you know, out of sorts. But mentally, you knew that you were going to get yourself through the game because you had that in the back of your mind, maybe retiring. So you just yeah. wanted to put everything out there. And it's funny how, like, you spend, you talk about, like, player analysis mm. and, like, so much goes into all this. But, like, not, not 1% of me was thinking about, like, Guy Ringrose or, like, I think Robbie Henshaw was just back and these phenomenal players. I was just going, like, what happens moment. if I just, after 30 seconds of the game, cannot play? And I have to put my hand up and be like, guys, I'm I'm leaving the pitch. I'm letting you down. This is this could be the last one of my last things. So like I was sick to the stomach all week. And so now I look back on that occasion with a lot of relief. But again, to mention the highs and lows, I yeah, go, do you that's know what? I remember. Like, you've, you've, you've jumped in and taken my last question. So mm, Megan was yeah. supposed to have a question, but mine was, I was going to ask you your proudest that's moment. So like, that is your proudest mm. moment, I suppose, essentially, is it, when you think about it? Potentially, yeah, because I was sick to the stomach all week and I just look back and I'm like, I'm so thankful that it, it, it held up to a certain level. And okay, we didn't win. And yeah, like, you know, Ulster celebrating, losing to Leinster, all that. Um, that or... Um, our Champions Cup, our European Cup run in 2012 is very, I think, the Europe, one of your favourite games, probably the quarter final. <laughs> um, 
Why? What happened? Uh, we beat Munster in Dublin Park. <laughs> and I think it only had happened <laughs> once in Europe, but there is something so... The Irish derbies are so ah, they're, they're special. In, incredible. And, you know, we... Like we, you could you could write off the whole season and beat those three teams, and that would be it done. And there's nothing more satisfying. And equally, there's no three teams that I respect more than all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, outside of Ulster, there's no three teams that I said, well, do you know, what? if I wasn't an Ulsterman, I love what I love the way Munster. I love, it. like, I have so much respect and yeah. admiration for them, and they're lovely guys. But you still but, want to beat them. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, um, you could be nice, but you're like, it's the no, same with the fans. You. Like, yeah. they're such. The provinces are so well supported. We're we're yeah. very lucky, and, yeah. and being in those games where it's like you know 20, 30, 40, uh, the the Champions Cup final is eighty thousand people, and the stadium's Incredible. like mm-hmm. literally the halfway line is red or blue or you know red or white or whatever. It's it's really really special. So um, the Munster uh, quarter final, I probably have to put that in as well, just for you. Ah, oh, brilliant! <laughs> right, Darren, thanks for being such a good sport. Now let's get on to the good stuff. Let's get on to the URC. Um, Starting off with Connacht, 34-7 bonus point win over the Blues, over the Blues, over the Bulls at the sports ground, bouncing back well after a defeat to the Cardiff Blues the previous week. Um, did you get a chance to see that turn? I did, and I most definitely have a new favourite second team because Connacht were absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, how good to see five tries from outside backs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if we love a scrum or a mall on this show, but it's good to see the back scoring tries. Yeah. A um, couple in the centre as well. So. Uh, yeah, Tom Daly had a great match. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, Tom Farrell as well. He scored twice, didn't he? He, Daly got two, and Farrell scored an absolute worldie yeah. off yeah. a scrum. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, lo- I love the way they play. Like, yeah. you know, there was, a bit of, there was a bit of, you know, huff and puff up front, um, but. Just some lovely rug. I mean, Mac Hansen. That uh, if you haven't seen that try, look it up. Yeah, or yeah. If you're this is the guy. Up. If people are he's unaware of, is he came? He's he actually born in Australia. Came over here. I think he. I don't know who he played, but I think he might have been played with a bit of the Brumbies or whatnot. But uh, he's Irish qualified. He's only 22, I think. But you get it. Like, absolute superstar in the making, I think, and someone who could potentially earn. Irish and Ireland are short of wingers. They only have about 15 of them. So um, <laughs> I'm sure they'll just slip right into the starting 15. But no, I'm I'm a Westy now. I loved it. It was class. Yeah, yeah. I was so, only saying, yeah. like, I remember watching like the first 30 minutes, they tried to kind of match them up front. And as we all know, like, there's no point in trying to match the South African team up front, whether it's the box or a club side. But as soon as they got the ball into the backfield, started spreading it wide, mm. started moving the ball, they were absolutely running rings well, the, around the, the Bulls yeah. like completely dominated the first two minutes because they went seven 0 up, and then that's when <laughs> went, uh, that's when it all went wrong. Yeah. But no, it's nice to see some good uh, ruggers. That uh, Farrell try off first phase, and um, you know they've been playing like ever since Pat Lamb was there. Connacht just said, right, we're going to start throwing the ball around, and why not? Um, yeah. It is good, and uh, since Andy Friends come in, they've just kept doing it. Yeah. Uh, and fair play to them. It's um, yeah. it's class to watch, and they're my new favorite second team. Uh, no, they have. Um, Connor has started really well, but also Monster taking a bonus point win, 34-18. They had a shaky start at the beginning, but uh, what do you think coming shaky. into it? You know, the they word. were down 15 nil, and then they came back. You know, like we talk about cliches, right? Yeah. Winning ugly, right? Just if you're not sure what winning ugly means, like watch that game yeah. because <laughs> that's a great point. Or Jason Nyman, I don't even know how you describe that massacre of a try. What was that? Was that um that was the, 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 the tennis ball action yeah, thing? The ball or the, pick and go. The, I don't know. Michael Jordan was. slam over the top. It's good yeah. to see him back though. I mean, I, mean, I think yeah. Munster, Munster are going to be good this season. I mean, people don't give him the credit like this. I know they they haven't won anything in a very long time, mm-hmm. but they've they've got to plenty semi finals and finals, right? But They've, they've got Snyman coming back in this year, right? After being out for a full 12 months. They've got Carberry for a full season. They've got Murray to come back. They've got Byrne to come back into the squad. They, like, you know, Larkham and, and Roundtree are there now a couple of years. I think Munster, I think Munster, this could be the year. Now, they, it might just be a matter of you them winning like the a, Shield. You sound like a Liverpool fan there. Stop now, yeah. <laughs> are you a Liverpool fan as well? No, I'm not a Liverpool fan. Do, no, do, it could no. be our year. It could be our right, year. That's, it that's what be. I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm hoping it's our year. I, I, I think Munster look good. Really yep. good, and the sign of a good team. Like, mm. I mean, they were dreadful, they and they won. The place, the bonus minimum. point win. Yeah, mm. when you're playing badly, mm. uh, we know like they're, they're just they're quite a rounded team now. Munster mm. obviously known for the forward play, and they showed it. But um, you know, Zebo coming back as well. Uh, good squad there, now. so many good players mm. now. Um, I'm and surprised Zebo wasn't starting the match after last week. Yeah, it must be just rests and rotations. Yeah. And that's it. Because they didn't get much ball in that match at all. No. No. But how much, how weird is it, Gavin Coombs, right, 
how much he am I um, like a part-time sort of monster viewer, or is he like a carbon copy of CJ Stander? See when he gets the ball like two <laughs> meters from the line, you know, and you know, and monsters are very good at yeah. that, and they're two meters from the line, and everyone gets real close mm -hmm. and yeah, they yeah. up, and then all it just and the ref like he's scoring tries yeah, like every literally time. for fun. And it used to yeah. be Stander, and now yeah. he gets up with the ball. Well, like think about it, if you're a young lad coming through, he's only young. He's obviously came up to training. Okay, who's the best number eight in the province? Stander. So he's obviously been watching him. Yeah. Like I'm sure a lot of players do that when they're coming up, okay, I want to be the next 13 for Ulster or whatever. Who's the 13 at the moment? He's class. Oh, anyone like him? anyone yeah. but me, who were like, was how I was. 19 <laughs> carries, yeah, 51 metres game, 12 meters tackles. He's, he's like, if you're, like, if you're looking at the number eight position this year, mm. would you look at, I mean, you've obviously got Coombs there. You've got Conan who just started three tests for the Lions. And then you've got Doris to come in as well. I mean, a lot of competition there. It's mad. And the biggest sort of um, issue is that like Leinster can't even figure out who their best back rowers are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You could end up with like Jack Conan could end up not being in a Champions Cup 23 for Leinster and you wouldn't really be that surprised. Mm. But it seems ridiculous because apparently he's the best number eight in the British Irish Isles. <laughs> so it's, um, it's there's, there's um, Leinster for you. It's absolute madness. Yeah. Uh, but I like Gavin Coombs. I, he's class. Mm. Um, and I think Munster are going to be good. They're yeah. going to win year. something is what he's saying. It was a good end to the match as well. You know, he was 44 metres out and he, yeah. he got it. Benheny really really will yeah, another one, yeah. He's got some boot. Yeah, he, he was just like, I want to kick it, I want to kick it. <laughs> I like Carberry as yeah. well. I, I don't think we've Carberry's seen... kicking since he came back though. Like he, he he nearly broke a record. I think it was something like 49 kicks or the 50 or whatever it was. But then he got the injury since he's came back with Ireland and with Munster. He's missing a lot of kicks. I don't know so if it's... slagging him off. I'm not, I'm just I, saying he's I, not himself. He's not I himself. Like Carberry. I, I like, like Carberry as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like him as well, but I'm I think... sure he's a lovely fella and doesn't deserve this uh, bad journey he's getting from this uh, <laughs> Munster fan over here. But... Um, <laughs> Not. Right, look, we'll move on, move on, right? I wasn't slagging Carberry, right? Ulster, right, your former team, you were actually on co-coms for this game, for the Zebra game. 36-3 win, bonus point win. Not the most exhilarating of affairs. It was, it was, it, do you know, I, I didn't know, genuinely, just being honest on commentary, I just didn't know how to, like, pitch it because mm. I thought, like, that is a really good result, okay? 36-3, mm. Thir you've gone over, you've stopped, like you smashed them, you got a bonus point. Job done. Uh, you won by 33 points. Like, that is absolutely job done. Um, in terms of the result, like, you, you can't really... You, this is as good as you can do. The performance was the complete opposite, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's hard to really... It's hard to assess because... Yeah, like, what, what do you say? As a player, if that had been me and, like, pundits and people were having a go... How big money on about it? We've just gone to Zebra and won 36-3. Like, we just yeah. saw, um, you know... You feel a little bit sorry for them, don't you, a little bit yeah, now? Yeah, so I am reluctant to, like, give mm. them a hard time, but yeah. they were crap. Well, there were some, there were some <laughs> younger players. <laughs> they were dreadful. <laughs> they had some younger players playing as well, though. Like, and I said, yeah. they went over, they got the job done, but, like, yeah, just, like... I think Let's you look at it from an entertainment point of view, it wasn't great to watch. Yeah. I think you mentioned in the commentary, and actually I thought it was quite funny, you were like, number 12, he has some set of hair. <laughs> you were saying he's got more hair than you and got, and oh, the other yeah, commentator put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um. I, I love uh, my Premier Sports co-commentator. Uh, I'm the co-commentator, the lead commentator, that's Mark it. Robson. Oh, okay, and uh, I love Robbo, but um, I don't mind saying sometimes he leads you down the garden path <laughs> with a certain like uh, conversation. If you've ever listened to him, because at one stage he was talking about a tennis match between <laughs> Billy Burns. And you were kind of going with the flow a little bit, like. Yeah, well, comment how it kind of works is a lead commentator kind of steers it and they'll bring something up and say something and pause and the pause okay. is inviting you in. So okay. he'll say, you know, when Craig Gilroy beat Billy Burns in a tennis match, <laughs> and pause as if, and it like, comes to me and I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to that? <laughs> so, uh, no, but he's, yeah. he's a good, he's, it's a serious skill, lead commentary, and he's very, very good, mm. so I'm not getting him a hard time. But, <laughs> Looking yeah. at the other, the other couple of games, are we, we're not allowed to talk about the Welsh teams, are we? Well, they, they won anyway, the Ospreys beat... You do not like the last teams? I don't know, <laughs> Scarlet defeated Lions Lions anyway, guys. Uh, Ospreys defeated Cardiff. And Benetton, Edinburgh, that was a cool game. 84 minute drop ball for Benetton to defeat, to defeat Edinburgh. Mm. That was pretty cool. And good to see them, the, the Rainbow Cup champions. Mm. Mm. Good to see them getting wins. Good side. Yeah, they getting are. Better. They kind of... I, I remember three or four years ago, they got into the quarterfinals of the league and then they've had a, they've had a bad year and... Um, yeah, 84th minute drop goal. I mean, that's good TV. That's what we want. <laughs> People want exciting leagues. South African yeah. teams in. 84th minute drop goals. What more do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we want. That's what we want. Right. We, let's, let's move on to a nice little section here. I, I, I don't like to use this word, but our losers of the weekend. They're not really losers of the weekend, but, you know, decisions. The ones that didn't perform as well. No, it's not, not even losers. Just kind of moments that we're looking at over the weekend that we kind of feel, okay, this isn't good, right? Uh, Niall Scanlon getting bit. 
the Monster Hook are, well, allegedly getting bit, and Monster have said they're going to go down the channels and they're going to look at this. Um, it doesn't look good in the, in, the, in the footage. You can't see much, but you can hear Peter Armani talking about, okay, he's got a big, massive bite mark on his leg. Yeah. Is this, has this ever happened to, like, has this ever happened to you in a match, like something like this? Have you ever been I bitten to or gouged? I managed to survive my whole career without being bitten. Um, <laughs> Quite uh, yeah, listen, it's, um, it's something that you just don't, yeah, it's just an incident that you just don't want to see happen. Obviously, like, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Like, bite marks don't come from, no smoke without fire, is that what they say? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm not sure where the bite, bite marks, where they came from, if he wasn't bitten. Yeah. And um, that's all I will comment well, on. Well, the referees had a look at it. They said, you know, quoted, they couldn't see any evidence of it, but they'll go through the right channels. Um, and take great, it from there. That's a great like uh, like leaf from the from the from the referee, isn't it? Yeah. This is no evidence, <laughs> and we're going to look into it. <laughs> Fairness, there's nothing there, like, but like it, it, it'll come down to I suppose a hearing, yeah. and you use evidence of the, the bite mark and all that. But okay, I want to get onto like this. Moving on from that, this is something I don't know if you've seen this, right? I don't know if you've seen this either. But mm -hmm. Jake White's pre-match comments. <sighs> About Connacht. Connacht opposition tonight. What do you know about them and where do you see their strengths? Uh, a lot of Leinster players who come down from Leinster. Obviously, the guys who didn't get contracts up there come down. Yeah, it's very similar to you know a couple of franchises we have in South Africa. When they don't get contracted by the big unions, they go down to the small provinces and then obviously try and find a way in which they can get noticed by, by the bigger provinces. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, as I said, we, we're used to playing that sort of opposition. That's, I mean, <laughs> like... 34 points later, that's looking like a uh, seriously good... I mean... Actually, do you know earlier when I said that, like, people should be, like, encouraged to speak their mind and not give the party line? I, I think that's... A, a, he took that... He must have been listening to me, and he's just <laughs> taken a little bit too literally. What What did I call him I earlier on? Know. When we were sitting down oh, on his Oh, he's like the granddad. Do you know when you're at a, a party or you're at a something, and like, that granddad in the corner, and he says something, he's like, granddad, you can't say that. That's, that's what it is. And then he like, says yeah. it anyway. That's Jake White. I'm just happy he hasn't realised that Ulster have about 15 players um, from. <laughs> I think the I think the Ulster Academy is now called uh, St Michael's College. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I wonder what he's going to say when um, they're playing Munster when they're playing Ulster. Yeah, he'll just think he's playing the Springboks, I suppose. They say he'll make some joke about uh, stealing all the Springbok players and the fact that Munster has plenty of Leinster players as well. Like, but look, I mean, I, I think it's, it's fair to say we go back years ago, Connacht were a bit of a feeder team back in the day, and I'm sorry, Connacht fans don't mean to say that, but to say that now, Connacht are, 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 are you know, are, as good as any other province, and if you, you don't, it's just because you can't make, you don't not make it at Leinster and then go to Connacht, like, that's absolute nonsense. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. good to say. It feels like a long time ago, but I do I do remember when there was chat that Connacht were going to get defunded, but, uh, you know, mm. uh, I'm an old man now, it was a long, long time ago, and let's be honest, guys, Connacht have won more trophies in the past 10 years than Munster and Ulster combined. combined. <laughs> yep. yep. So, there yep. you go. Yep, so that's, that's a nice one to say. Right, um, Megan? You want to introduce our next section? Now we're going to take a look at the nominations for Try of the Week. First up is this brilliant team effort by the Scarlet scored by Tom Rogers. Look at this, guys. If you've all seen this, this is really, really nice try here. I love the way John Davies is like, it just slows up there. He's yeah. like, right, come, it's and, come and smash me. <laughs> and put the winger in. That's lovely. That's an excellent try. Cole Forbes got a really nice one for Glasgow against the Sharks. Oh, this is the offload try. So many offloads. They drew go. a lot of players in here. here I saw this. Is this, is this is it Johnson that runs this line, this next one here? Like, Johnson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about like staying oh, square and letting the ball rip. Look at little offload. Offload. Oh, nice. <laughs> lovely. It's beautiful. Nice. And finally then, this absolute worldy by Mac Hansen for Connacht. This oh, try, lads. I know people are giving out that there might have been obstruction. There's That's no obstruction in this try. It's just sit back, relax and enjoy. Incredible. I had seen it earlier and I've just seen it again and I think there is obstruction. Yeah. I disagree with you. No. We'll agree to disagree. That's some try. That was unbelievable, get him, off, get, him, get him an Irish cap, get him an Irish cap. Um, right. So what do you think? Who wins? It, 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 was there was there blocking? I, was there was there obstruction? That the is. The try stands. So Mac, 
Hansen, that is an absolute screamer. Yeah. That has got to be it. Even like the, the take and like, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Do you agree? I'd say so. That was the best one. Yeah. Just the way he came in and out. Like it was a great bit of rugby to watch because it's not often yeah, that the winger gets to brilliant. swerve in and out. And not yeah, anyone brilliant. can catch a high ball in Galway. Like never mind, yeah. the, never mind the 60 meter run afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good bit of individual brilliance there. Right. Up next, my favourite award, the Jukebox of the Week. So guys, we've got three nominations again. Uh, up first is Tommaso Bonnie, who went low on Stuart, Mark, but Stuart Moore with a textbook tackle. Marshall, you were on this, you were watching this game. Oh, look at that. That's, that's, that's just huge. Um, the penalty for holding on. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I like that, that was good, that was a good hit. <laughs> up next is Snyman, who made a big hit coming on against the Stormers. I love this. Little box kick up from Casey, Casey and all of a sudden you've got Great six chase. foot ten of South <laughs> African oosh up on top of you. Imagine being underneath that. that. I'd say that hurt a lot. No interest. That's bruised in the morning. That's going to be bruised in the morning. Right up next is Fijian winger. Uh, this I can't remember. But you were at the game. Tu Tu Waki, Tui Tui Tu Waki, Tui Tu Waki. The big Fijian. Look at this. <laughs> And yeah, another one. How's it Boshing going? And there off. we go. That is. That's my favourite anyway. I'm voting for that. Even though I can't pronounce his name. What yeah, that was serious, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's proper. Let's leave him, let him go. Like. So you're, you're going with two, yeah. what's it, Tui two, two, Tuaki? We'll we'll go with Tui Vuaki. Tui Vuaki, there we go. Who are you going with? I, I was going to say the Simon's pretty good. Like He had a, such a great game, uh, but uh, two, two, so he looks like he's winning everything. <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> right, let's move on, guys. Um, other standout moments of the week. Uh, I absolutely love this one. Um, you were at this game, um, Mark Robson, your, your co commentator. And the opening minutes of the game, got a little bit excited, a little bit excited, thought that Ulster had scored a try. So. Oh, we can almost stretch Canna. What a tackle by Canna. But the pressure pays off in the end, and Zebra cannot resist the force of that Ulster drive, and they get over for the... It's a penalty to Zebra. <laughs> 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 yeah. Darren, like what the, do you say? Like what do you say to that? Oh. <laughs> it's so funny because um, so, so I didn't see it. I saw it the way it was as, as a penalty, uh, but I could hear in Robbo's voice, mm -hmm. and you know, and I, it's not. I was going, that's <laughs> not typically how somebody would say it. That's a penalty. <laughs> and then, he, as as I said in the commentary, after he actually convinced me. I was yeah. like, well, maybe, what? Uh, anyway. well, I was fully convinced it was a try for a second as well. Because like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, you see, you were the same. Same. Like, was like, that looks. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, his arm's pointing the other way. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Right, another one from the, from the same game. Uh, back to your lovely commentary again. Uh, Craig Gilroy's sweet mm. offload for James Hume's try. Um, what's interesting about that is, what did you mention during the game? Well, it was some nice play from James Hume, wasn't it? And the, the robber was talking about how good he was, and I, was, I felt like he was rubbing salt, salt in the, the wound <laughs> of, as to why I no longer play professional rugby. So, uh, you know, say what you see. And uh, that's what I saw, so I, I said that. Yeah, oh, he's a good player, fairness, wasn't he? Like, I mean, what do you think of him? Has he got potential to go places like international wise, honours wise? Yeah, I think, listen, Ireland, load, Ireland are of good depth everywhere, but I think he's I think he's a real good player. I like a lot about him. Uh, he's got like, the likes of Jared Payne up there and Stuart McCluskey, so he's got a lot of stuff to learn. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think he definitely has potential to to, to kick on and be a, be a good international player. Yep, definitely. We have um, Reese. Um, I hope I'm saying it right, Priestland. He was Priestland. Uh, Priestland. He, um, you can see in the clip here, made a, a lovely kick, Middleton but then kick. the winger Double. followed it up. Josh as Adams. He, um, yeah. Josh Adams as he missed it. So it just shows that uh, the winger should always follow the kicks. It's a great little try on the bounce. I'm sure you would have chased that <laughs> in your day, Darren, would you? I can't imagine how annoyed the Ospreys coaches are going to be. You He's know, watching. you know they're going to be doing. He looks really Monday. surprised himself as well. Getting that. <laughs> in on Monday, they're going to be doing formations from like, do you know what I mean? For post returns. Um, so yeah, that must be frustrating as a coach. Yeah, definitely. I want to go back to Munster again, like uh, R.G. Snyman's try over the weekend. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> if you see this, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's look, it looks like he's holding a tennis ball in his hand. He comes over with this Michael Jordan dunk. Look, look at this. This is absolutely. 
Brilliant. And like we referred to it earlier when we were yeah. talking about like monster scoring from malls, monster scoring from pick and goes, and I was like, what? Like, what's that? Yeah. What? What is, is that, that? A mall or a pick and go? Uh, or just I, that's I just a machine that, that is. But it's good to see him back. Like I'm like I remember seeing clips of him before he came into Munster, and he was playing over in the, in the, the, top, the top league in Japan, and he was doing all this stuff. Like, oh, he wanted that when he gets over here. I mean, clearly, he can still do that because he's just an absolute freak. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone was tweeting. It looked like a little peanut in his hand. His quality is... It's crazy, what a Boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Right, Darren, thanks a million for joining us. When you have two daughters under two, it's just nice to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back again. Thanks, Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. We're going to have a look at the fan zone now, seeing what you guys are saying over on social media and the latest tweets coming in from Jason. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, Leicester Tigers and Saracens game. As obviously, I was watching the URC, but keeping a close eye on Twitter. 84-minute penalty try for... Leicester to beat Saracens. And you love to see Saracens lose. <laughs> of course, of course you do, of course you do. And I think it was a young enough ref. And mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's, it's a ballsy move to, 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 to hand in a penalty or to award a penalty try that late in the game, like to give them the win. But uh, yeah, good to see. Um, obviously, I know you're obviously sick and tired of listening to me talk about the Springboks <laughs> and New Zealand game. But if you get a chance, if you look at Rugby Joe's uh, Twitter, it's on House of Rugby's Twitter. I see um, this clip actually. Lucano's arm, ridiculous. Mm. Kind of off, I wouldn't call it awful. It was around the back pass. Oh, Absolutely brilliant. incredible. Uh, with, for the build up to Dale Enders try in the corner but um, yeah that's that's yeah. not much this week I know just a few there but um, we'll have plenty of action for next week um, so tune in and don't forget to use the hashtag House of Rugby URC to give us all your feedback on your tweets and your favourite moments I just have one more late tweet we'll just oh. have get, we're just getting the final result in here obviously we're filming this on a Sunday uh, 7-6 is all Leinster have managed to beat the Dragons boy and I'm not trying to insult the Dragons but I don't think that's the result we expected. Yeah, very we close. We're going to have to surprised. have a chat about next week. Um, I think we all expected a, a, a handy bonus point there for Leinster but uh, James Ryan was captain today. Obviously captain Ireland over the summer as well. Um, you, I think you have a bit of a James Ryan story for us. Yeah, it's great to see um, James captaining because I remember when he was in the under-20s I used to be the family's um, personal trainer <laughs> and his dad used to say all the time that he was going to be the next Paul O'Connell. So he fair off, like he's, he's heading not. in the right direction and certainly. But look guys, I mean that's all we've got time for this week. I mean I don't know about you Megan but I had a great time and I think Darren did too hopefully. Yeah, it was brilliant. Thank Thanks again to our partners, Bank of Ireland, proud sponsors of the four Irish provinces. And tune in next week where we see round three of the United Rugby Championship. We'll also have a new presenter joining our team next week, who I think you'll absolutely love. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Yeah.